Hey everyone, Ken and Melissa here. We've been busy. Ah, it's been tail, tail, tail. Shake your tail feathers. Try not to shake it too much. <laughs> but we've made a lot of progress on the on the tail kit so far. So uh, come along for the journey. And don't forget, down there, I think in the bottom right corner, click our little icon. Subscribe to our channel. It does help us. It helps the more subscriptions we have, the more people get to see our content. So don't, go ahead, go ahead. It's right down there. All right, go ahead, click it, click it. Got it? All right, let's go talk about our tail kit. We got back from Oshkosh. It's been kind of build, build, build. Uh, more days than not. I don't know about you, but I was super motivated when we got back. Huh. So what have we been working on? We've been rolling through the tail kit like... One section after another. Yeah, it's kind of been amazing. So we already published the video about uh, us doing the vertical stabilizer, which is the first section that most people start their building career with. But it was our first section of the tail kit. We did it in nine hours and we were excited. Yeah. We're gonna like, we're gonna breeze through section to section. You know, maybe some of the sections will take us, you know, two or three days worth of work. Hasn't quite worked out that way, has it? No, some of these sections are a bit more complicated than that. Yeah, so, so. a lot of attention to detail, um, even though we've done a lot on the fuselage, which feels like a past life at this point. <laughs> it's been a while it's since been, we worked on it. It's been a while since we touched the fuselage, but um, so we've had to come up with a whole new set of skills to deal with you know riveting and really tight quarters which we thought the fuselage was tight but ooh, get inside of a rudder or inside of an elevator much tighter that that so you get creative with that um i honestly think start with fuselage please i i i know they recommend tail kit first the instructions are a little bit more handholdish, but not as much as i thought um, I, I found, I learned a lot in the fuselage. We learned a lot in the fuselage, but if you're going to finish the builds and know what you're getting into, the tail kit has it. Yeah. So if you're working on the tail kit right now and you go, wow, um, this is a lot. It gets better when you get to the fuselage. Um, I, I actually think the fuselage is a lot of fun. Um, and when we get to the the empennage section, the, the, the rear tail fuselage. The part, aft fuselage. Aft fuselage that connects the tail to the fuselage kit. Uh, from what we hear, that's actually really uh, back to what we were used to with the, the main fuselage. Uh, and we'll be starting that soon. Yeah, probably in the next couple of weeks. Yep, um, maybe after our vacation. We are gonna take a week off from building and go <laughs> enjoy a beach somewhere for a little bit. So vertical stabilizer got that done pretty quick. And I'm still pretty, really impressed with <clears throat> that vertical stabilizer looking. I think we did a good job on it. Yeah. Uh, then we went to the rudder. Oh boy, the rudder. It all went together really quickly. You know, you put it all together, you take it all apart, you put it back together, but then we had some fun. So the real uh, learning experience was rolling the leading edge. Wasn't that fun? Dan? Oh, I enjoyed that. We, I think most of my cuts have finally Yeah, I'm kind healed of up. healed up. <laughs> so I deburr those edges. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think we, we got through that before we got the scotch bright wheel. Yeah. So uh, we definitely um, spent some time um, Learning the importance of deburn in Oshkosh, we came home with three new Scotch Bright wheels. 
We've talked about the two that we put on the um, bench grinder back there, uh, but we also got a uh, angle die. Um, the little, little one. The little one that we use, great for edges. Um, so we kind of went out and got a plethora of PVC pipes. Uh, went to the depot. Aww. It's not medium. <laughs> it's not Home Depot because it already feels like home. So it's just the depot to us. All right? Yeah. Don't worry, the jokes don't get any better. <laughs> um, so we've got small, medium, large. Uh, we tried it with painter's tape at first because I was really paranoid about stick and duct tape or uh, more strong tape to the actual skin. I quickly got over that fear and went ahead and got the Gorilla Tape um, was definitely the right answer. And it takes patience, brute force, and... Um, a couple of four letter words. Yes, colorful <laughs> language to get that curve in. Uh, but we did get the <clears throat> lead and edge in. We did even call our friend at Vans, our uh, builder support, Kevin. Kevin. I wish I could say Kevin was amazingly helpful. He tried his best. Everything he said was spot on and correct. I just wanted an easy answer and there is none. Um, just, it feels like you're not gonna get it done. Um, you will, it's all about where, how much tape you put on the, um, to lead the PVC pipe so that you're controlling where the rolls happen in and varying that at different distances and lengths until you get it right. Um, you really do want to get the edges to line up so that it doesn't take a significant amount of effort to get Clecos in there. I know we uh, forced Clecos in early a couple times and uh, don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, there will be a little bit of force at the end when you, when you got it right. It's not like you walk away and you just place a toothpick between the holes. No, you want some loading on that forward edge before you put the Clico in. Um, but again, don't take our advice because we actually haven't made it to the vertical stabilizer yet to see if the thing actually fits. So we may be completely wrong. But, um, I hope not. Uh, the one thing Kevin did tell us is you're looking for a igloo and not a teepee. So what does that mean? So you don't want it to like be like this connected. You want an igloo. You want it flatter, connected like that. So it's coming off straight from the spar, then an aggressive bend that then rounds out. So it's a nice, even round bend towards where the uh Teepee. the holes are tp igloo tp igloo yes words of wisdom from kevin now uh melissa is going to be the tp igloo we got this so we, we got it done um the it, there's three sections that you fold a long section a medium section and a small section uh, I probably spent two or three nights trying to roll the uh, big section. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple hours rolling the medium section and like 10 minutes rolling the small section. Yeah. So um, it does get better. Uh, we know we've got rolling to do on the elevator next. Yeah, we're almost there. Yeah. So <laughs> vertical stabilizer, rudder, horizontal stabilizer, and elevators are almost done. All right. So the vertical stabilizer, the rudder, and the horizontal stabilizer are done. Correct. And then we're about to finish up the elevator in the next couple of days. Yeah, so we've been working hard probably the last week or two on the elevator. Yeah, the elevator has been a, a long one. Yep. There's a, there's a lot of attention to detail in the elevator. Um, and again, just because you're kind of working with two pieces. I mean, I almost wish they would... Separate the elevator, yeah. Right and left. Left one section, right one section. We've been trying to be as efficient as possible. And when we get set up for one thing, kind of do that skill all the way across both the left and right. But the left and right aren't equal. No, oh, they're very different. They are very, very different. There's, yeah, they're like uh, stepbrothers. Or like <laughs> they, they share. They share one parent, but not the other, because one side has the trim tab in it. Yeah. And so uh, keeping track of what's right, right side up and upside down and 
left and right um, becomes a real exercise in the, uh, the elevator. So our technique was um, the left side went off to our right and the right side went off to our left for storage. So when we make sense, yeah, it completely probably, probably should just turn around uh, and face the other direction, and then it would be perfect. But um, but having you know when we would work on everything, all the pieces would go off into that side when we switched to the other to keep everything together. Um, yeah. But we're pretty much got most of the rivets and the skin set. Um, all we have left to do is the trailing edge. Trailing edge and rolling. Trailing edge and rolling. And uh, uh, we got also the trim actuator, the yes, actual trim servo. Yeah, a little bit of uh, electronics to yeah. work on. So that's one surprising thing about RVs. I guess it's RVs in general, but definitely the RV14. Electric trim only. I'm so used to having a manual uh, mechanical trim with uh, electrical to go on it, but there is no control surface going back to that trim tab. It's just a little electric motor that drives the trim tab up and down. And uh, hmm. so um, something to kind of look for. I um, like backups and redundancy, but um, what I did here is even if it's fully, if the trim is put fully out of whack, you still have enough control authority to control the airplane. So even, and we did watch a friend uh, land an airplane with a, uh, I think it was trimmed all the way down, nose down. Yeah, it was stuck nose down. Yeah, so um, you, know, you still have control authority, um, but still electrical only. Um, interesting. He landed the plane just fine, so he I'm landed. not super worried about it. And it seems like a simple mechanical part, easy access, so if it ever, ever needs to be replaced, we can. Um, so the rudder was the challenge. We got it rolled, uh, the horizontal stabilizer. Nothing stands out. Yeah, I trying to. I have to go back and watch the videos, and I know we got some time lapse of us doing the horizontal stabilizer. It's really big. It's really big. It's where we um, had to make our um, fabricate our stands for it. Yeah. Which felt like we barely used for like a step or two. Um, the trick with the horizontal stabilizer is you're doing a lot of reaching into. Um, uh, buck the rivets. So now, now we're That's bringing right. back memories. That's right. Um, that was a little, a little challenging. Just inconvenient. I was the one down and. You do all the bucking. I know. You, you, you. She, she let me buck like two rivets and. You messed them up. They were horrible. So uh, I shoot. She bucks, and <laughs> you know, it, hey, it works for us. I tell you how to shoot sometimes. Yes, but. Um, so then we've been uh, working on the, uh, so we started the rudder before, uh, the vertical stabilizer before Oshkosh, right? And then the, the vertical stabilizer was done when we went to Oshkosh. And then uh, the rudder, we just barely started on and left we, it for we Oshkosh. We primed. We primed it and we assembled the skeleton. So I think we left it with the skeleton. Okay. Uh, here. So since Oshkosh, it's been... Uh, the, the rudder done, horizontal stabilizer done, and elevators 85, 90% done. Yeah. So get that done. Um, so now the dilemma, go back to the fuselage or do the aft uh, empennage, the aft fuselage. Next. I want to finish out this tail kit. Yeah. That's my thing. So after we do the, at the um, aft fuselage, mm -hmm which is required to connect to the fuselage when we get going pretty soon. Then there's the whole step of putting the horizontal and vertical stabilizer and elevators connecting it all up. I'm not sure if we should do all of that. I don't think so. Because then you take it off anyways to get it on the fuselage. So we may save that for much down the road. But at the current pace that we're going, Oh yeah, Vans did send us a delay notification on our wings. Yeah, wings have been delayed to October of next year. So October of 23. I think at the current pace that we're building, we may kind of start running out of stuff until the, the, the wings show up. So we may be looking for something to do. <gasps> you mean we can like, do things that we did before we built the air, started building the airplane. What were those things? 
wakeboarding, snowboarding, um, I don't remember ever doing Seeing this. our friends. Friends? Huh. We might have to actually get out and be social again. <laughs> Finish a private pilot's license. Oh, yeah, there's that. We put a whole lot on hold to keep building the way we have. Yeah. But uh, so we may have a little downtime. Uh, we may be able to jump ahead and. Um, at this rate, our engine showing up before our wings. I think September of 23 is when our engine is showing up. Mm -hmm. So um, I think the only major thing we'll be missing is engine mounts, and we might be able to get to work on the engine. We've got uh, the wheels, the brakes, the fuel lines. We've kind of got a the legs. Lot. We don't have legs. We don't have legs. Finishing kit. Is that in the finishing kit? Mm hmm Huh. So we may have to negotiate with Vans at getting a partial finishing kit sent out to us. <laughs> we'll see how that works. Uh, I know Vans is trying their best and um, continue to uh, have challenges with supply chain and getting everything out, um, but uh, they try their best. So uh, tail kit, making significant progress. It's been two or three months and mostly done. I'm pretty proud. I, I am too. I, it's, it's, you know, uh, we do kind of have those moments of we ding a skin a little bit. And we're like, yeah, Evoke will fix that. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, 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 I do not think our build is the most perfect, beautiful build, but I am really looking forward to this airplane flying. I think it's going to fly great and safe um, and be something we're proud of. For sure. I'll uh, keep on keeping on. We'll build some more and um, take you along for the journey. So thank you for tuning in to 14 Victor Echo. See you later.